Good morning, everybody. Thank you all for coming. We're going to make this pretty brief today. I know it's a little warm out there, but you'll be all right. It's worth it for those 38 gentlemen behind me. So uh, thank you all for coming. We're going to open up with the opening prayer, and I want to welcome uh, Reverend Jack Swanson, please. Uncover. <coughs> yes, good morning. This is the 72nd anniversary of the death of uh, First Lieutenant Walter Della Chiesa. So remember that today. Uh, before I say the prayer, I just want to share one thing. My daughter was a uh, graduate of Mass Maritime Academy. She did her cadet shipping in Korea. She was another cadet in a restaurant and signed up by the DMZ, a town about the size of Quincy. Uh, and they're looking at the menu. The manager came over and he said, I'll translate for you. And he said, by the way, no booze, you're too young. And your money's not good in my restaurant. Order anything you want. That's nice. Later that day, she bought a nice down jacket. It was 100 bucks. When uh, she went to pay for it, the clerk took would only take 25 And he said to her, he said, thank you. She walked out. The other cadet said, why are they so nice to us? What does he mean by thank you? My daughter, being the daughter of a history teacher, said, Korea, the war. Korea, Vietnam, Korea might be forgotten here. Not forgotten over there. Service is remembered. Let us give thanks today for the 38 that did not come back. Let us remember that our might in the cause of freedom is appreciated by many. Maybe not here, but definitely places over there. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the 38 on this wall, Lord God. Bless, Lord God, those who still remember them as family and still mourn these wounds never heal. Bless our humble and, in a sense, inadequate service today as we strive to honor them as best we can. Thank you, Lord God, for our nation. Thank you, Lord God, for all those who have worn the colors and the uniform of the country. Thank you, Lord, today for career safe behind that DMZ because of the sacrifice of this 38 and a legion war. Respect in all faiths, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Swanson. Cover. Detail. Bring our units to attention. Eric. If you can stand, please do for our national anthem. We sung today by Mr. Bill Daly. <clears throat> oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light was so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight All the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave of the land and of the free and the home of the Brave. Order. Order. You all can be seated now. Thank you. Again, thank you all for being here on the 72nd anniversary of the start of the Korean War, also known as the Forgotten War and the war that never really ended. 
During that time, 1,500 soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines from Massachusetts were killed, 54,000 throughout the nation. Here in Quincy, 38 young men lost their lives never to return home to the city they loved. This memorial is in memory of those 38 heroes from this city. Today, like, today, so today, like every year, we are here to remember them all, plus our Korea War veterans, to remind people of their sacrifice to this country. During the first two years of the war, the Quincy residents, 23 out of the 38 were killed in the first two years. Three of them in all, three in one day. Today, we have a number of Korean War veterans here at the ceremony. And if you are a Korean War veteran, please raise your hand to be recognized. Thank you, gentlemen. There's no secret that the mayor and the mayor's office of the city and the city council but do anything for our veterans. The city creates not only special people, but special veterans. Like this memorial idea, which was put together by a young Marine by the name of John Butch Mahoney, in his committee of Jack Beaton, Larry Norton, Dan Mahoney, Kenny Laudahan, Chuck Antonellis, Joseph Booker, Robert LaFleur, Brian Mahoney, and Chairman John Butch Mahoney, and many others. Butch is no longer with us, but his creation will live on. <clears throat> Butch's family is here today, if they can raise their hands to be recognized. Thank you. Butch passed away December 2nd, 2020. Before he passed, we reached out to Butch and asked him if we could do something and have someone maintain this beautiful island here. We told him we had the perfect person for it and he, gave, he agreed and gave us his blessings. That person is Steve Dunley, who we will hear from very shortly. This memorial started with a groundbreaking on June 25th, 1994, 28 years ago today. The dedication and ceremony took place on July 27th, 1996, on the 43rd anniversary of the ceasefire of the war. It was funded by private money, a Harley Davidson motorcycle raffle, and selling of these bricks for $100 each and private donations to make it all come to fruition. Before we move on to our program, I wanted to explain to all of you the work that's been done recently. This memorial is a beautiful piece of Quincy and it's perfectly made for this spot. So we didn't want to change anything. We kind of gave it an oil change, that's all we did. With the collaboration of all the, the city departments here in the city of Quincy who were great to help us out. We fixed all the bricks, leveled them all out. We eliminated the front bushes to clean it up. We installed two, three, uh, three new flagpoles behind me, which were just done yesterday. We replaced all the existing chains around this area. We laid, um, I'm sorry. And we also noticed that Butch did not have a brick on this island, so we purchased one. It's right behind me in front of this wall. But the most important piece of this project was not was to bring the granite stone behind me and the names on it back to life. We hired, we believe, was the best man for the job. We hired Skyline Studios owner and artist Bob Shaw. Bob did a fantastic job bringing this memorial back to its original form for many years. Bob didn't do this alone. He hired a very talented artist by the name of Dawn. I'm not gonna pronounce her last name for foreground conservation and decorative arts. They were truly a pleasure to work with. <clears throat> when they explained the whole process to me, well, I didn't believe them. Because the timing and the collaboration in putting 23 karat gold on this project is a difficult task. And if you don't do every process at the right time, well, let's just say it's not good. But that wasn't the case here. It looks beautiful. I know Bob is here today, so Bob, raise your hand and let, let it be known, sir. <laughs> Bob, uh, when, that, when I retire, if you can make a statue of me, take five inches off my waistline and put it on my head with some height, thank you. <laughs> I would also like to say thanks to the people that made this project come to life. Mayor Thomas Koch in the mayor's office, who never says no when we ask him. And from uh, Commissioner Dave Murphy, and General Foreman 
Steve Zambruno, who did an outstanding job at this project. Without him, this would have never have gotten done. <clears throat> now I'd like to introduce you, the gentleman that's going to take over this island. Please welcome Steve Dunley. Thanks, George. Good morning. Um, as everyone, as George had mentioned, the um, Butchie Mahoney, and me became good friends. I've known all of them, but I became good friends with them in 2002 when I got involved with the Morris at Post. And um, we were talking on the service, and I told him I spent a year in Korea, 81, 82. And Butch kind of just loved that for some reason. He took me under his wing, and he got me, he bought, purchased me a brick. And um, anyway, we got, you know, together years and years and years, and sometimes I'd give him a hand over here. And he talked to George before he passed about having me kind of maintain it um, and uh, with the blessing of the mayor and the, the two Georges I, I, I accepted but I me and George came down during the COVID last summer and looked it over and said there's no maintaining this right now it needs to be he called it an oil change I called it a frame-up restoration but it got done and it looks beautiful um, very quick on what Butchie and me discussed on Korea was um, 26 years after the verbal, uh, well, the armistice, they, <clears throat> I went to Korea with 249 people on a jet and didn't know where I was going, what I was doing. It was April of 1981. Well, when I got there, I thought it was on another planet. And honestly, I didn't see the moon for weeks. The place was like nothing I've ever seen in my life. And boy, you want to talk about freedom and hope. Thank God you were an American. Wow, what a lesson I learned at 20 years old. Well, it came a long way after that 26 years, but it was still not doing well, and there was still firefights on the DMZ and all kinds of issues. Flash forward to 40 years ago, this past April, I got out of Korea in 82. And it's a whole different story over there now. They are producing nice vehicles, great electronics. They have one of the best education systems in the world. They have, we couldn't eat off base. Now you can eat anywhere on, on off base because they have a better water system now, cleaner. They basically are like a mini America and they are having the, one of the greatest democracies that ever existed on that peninsula. So anyone who tells you that was forgotten, they haven't forgotten it. Because it wasn't for all you gentlemen here and the 54,000 plus on that wall, I mean, <laughs> they died over there, and the 38 on that wall, they wouldn't have that freedom. So you did a great job, and also the people serving there now and after the war. No one died in vain, because that country is prospering. And if you ever want an example of the difference between communism and democracy, you need to look no further than that peninsula because there's a DMZ called the 38th Parallel. Ironically, we have 38 flags representing the 38 on this wall, kind of ironic. On one side of DMZ, the north side, is nothing but oppression and lies, and half the people don't even own TVs. On the other side of that parallel is a democracy and a prospering nation, and that's democracy versus communism. Thank you all for being here, and God bless America. This time it's my honor to introduce to you the man that uh, never says no to us veterans, the Honorable Thomas P. Koch, the mayor. Thank you, George. I, I do want to acknowledge, uh, I have some colleagues in government out back here, State Senator John Keenan, District Attorney Mike Morrissey and State Representative Bruce Ayers are very supportive of our veterans and bills and legislation that have gone before Beacon Hill. We, we're grateful for that, guys. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Certainly want to bring the greetings of the city to this to this beautiful morning here outside of Veterans Memorial Stadium, just south of the World War II Memorial and just north of the World War I Memorial. It's a great reminder this stretch in our city of the incredible, incredible service of the men and women from Quincy. I did want to acknowledge, uh, you know, talking about Butch Mahoney, uh, I remember working with Butch, I was at the Park Department at that time uh, on this project, and uh, Butch loved the city, Butch loved the kids. Uh, aside from his work with veterans, 
he was really way ahead of his time. We're dealing with addiction issues today that Butch was dealing with back in the 70s and 80s uh, for our school system. Uh, Butch and Ruth were just tremendous citizens of Quincy. I went to high school with his daughter Susan. Uh, so we certainly miss Butch and we, we thank him for his leadership on creating this beautiful monument, particularly for the 38 names on the wall, but all those who served. Steve Dunley mentioned it. Um, Communism has been a failure from every aspect. We can never let our guard down. I mean, if it were not for America stepping up, for South Korea, that would be a communist peninsula in total. We look at the history of this nation, we weren't out to be an imperialistic nation, nation building. No, we wanted to share the ideals that Adams and Washington and Jefferson fought for the ideals of individual freedom. You don't have that in communism. And don't let us be, be caught asleep because all you have to do today, who would think would have an invasion of a European country? But again, the instigator, Russia, the instigator, China, just as it was back with South Korea. It was Russia and China being instigators in that battle. So we're, we're grateful for the veterans. We'll never forget the names. We always gotta remember to tell their stories. I do think that we have become very, very spoiled in this nation, and I don't know that we have the appreciation that we ought to have. John Adams once said, every democracy at some point commits suicide. I hope that's not the case with the great U.S. of A. But it's a reminder to us that we can never let our guard down, that we need the men and women in uniform serving all across the globe, and if not, you can be assured that China and Russia would be moving their troops even further, spreading the evil ideals of communism and the suppression of individual freedom. So I know we have uh, men and women serving all across the globe today, including in South Korea. Let us remember them. God bless our veterans and may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Is uh, Commander Tenney here? I'd like to bring Commander Tenney up. Right here, sir. Please welcome the Commander for the Quincy Veterans Council, Dan Tenney. Thank you all for coming out. Uh, the Quincy Veterans Council is, consists of uh, four American Legion posts, uh, 95, 294, 380, 382, uh, the VFW 613, and the caddy post, uh, the Marine caddy post. So uh, they're all represented here today, and they're all very grateful that such a good response has been received from uh, not only the veterans, but their uh, friends and family. Thank you. Thank you, Commander. Our next speaker is the uh, newly um, appointed Director of Veteran Services. Please welcome Christine Cugini. Good morning, everyone. And thank you for the opportunity to be here with you today as we remember and honor those who fought in the Korean War, also known as the Forgotten War. I believe I can say with certainty that as a nation, a city, and a community that we will never forget. To the families and friends who lost a loved one, I'm so sorry. But let us be grateful and honored that we have men like them. God bless all of you, God bless our veterans, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Director. At this time, I'm gonna have uh, Mr. Guy Ferris come up and uh, read the bio of our guest speaker today, Mr. Shaw. Guy. United States Air Force Captain, Flight Instructor, William Ferris, thank you. Thank you, Commander. Master Sergeant Robert P. Shaw, United States Army, retired. Robert Bob Shaw was born in Boston, Mass. in 1932 as a middle child in a family of five children. His dad, Francis, worked in the Four River Shipyard in Quincy during World War II, and his mother, Gertrude, went to work at Watertown Arsenal during World War II while raising five children. Bob grew up in Dorchester, Mass., and graduated from Hyde Park High School in 1949. He followed in his older brother's footsteps and enlisted in the Army at the age of 17. He completed basic training at Fort Dix, New Jersey and received his first orders 
to join the Engineering Corps in Fort Lewis, Washington. Shortly after arriving at Fort Lewis, the Korean War broke out. Bob was assigned to the Combat Engineer Battalion, supporting the 2nd Infantry Division, and arrived in Korea in early August 1950, shortly after turning 18 years old. Bob's battalion arrived at the Pusan perimeter and focused on building roads and bridges, putting in minefields, and often engaging as infantry as the UN troops advanced rapidly toward the Manchurian border. Alarmed by this advancement, the Chinese entered the war in November 1950. Unknown to the UN planners, the Chinese already had 180,000 troops hidden in the mountains with more reinforcements arriving daily. The Chinese launched a massive frontal attack lasting nearly two weeks and forcing the withdrawal of the UN troops. The Chinese blocked the only escape route at a mountain pass called the Gauntlet in Kunu Ri. The Battle of Kunu Ri raged, raged for three days. The 2nd Infantry and Bob's Combat Engineer Battalion suffered major casualties, going from 1,000 to 237 men and burning the colors when the battalion command staff were captured. There were 10 major battles in the Korean War and Bob participated in six of those battles. His battalion earned the Presidential Unit Citation, awarded for extraordinary heroism in action against an armed enemy displaying such gallantry, determination, and esprit de corps in accomplishing its mission under extremely difficult and hazardous conditions and to set it apart above other units participating in the same campaign. Bob served in Korea for 13 months and was then assigned to Fort Campbell, Kentucky with the Combat Engineer Unit until 1952. After marrying the girl next door, Virginia, in 1953, Bob was stationed in Germany for three years with the Combat Battalion. Returning stateside in 1956, Bob became a recruiter and served at Fort Belvoir, Virginia and Fort Hood, Texas until 1960. Bob's last assignment was Boston, Mass, where he served as recruiter for nine years until he was assigned another tour of duty in South Korea from 1968 to 69. Bob and Virginia bought a home in Mansfield, Mass in 1961 where they raised their six children. Bob retired from the Army as a Master Sergeant E-8 in February 1972. As a civilian, Bob opened his own auto leasing business in Braintree, Mass. His son Bobby and grandson Rob now run this family business. Bob remained close to many of the men with whom he served in Korea and has remained active and supportive of 2nd Infantry and Combat Engineers activities over the past seven decades. Bob will be marking his 90th birthday on July 28th with a big celebration surrounded by over 100 family and friends. Please welcome retired Master Sergeant Robert P. Shaw, United States Army. Bob. Pretty good for a kid from Dorchester, huh? <laughs> well, um, cover. I appreciate the invitation. It's nice to mingle with a lot of veterans because, you know, in many instances, um, even even at educational institutions, the teachers really don't know much about the Korean War. One of my grandsons, who had been to Korea with myself and his dad, and so the teacher asked him where he went on vacation. He said, Korea. He said, what were you doing there? So, I mean, she really didn't know what the hell was going on, you know? So, hopefully they'll get that. As, as, as you know, it's, it's forgot, forgotten war. It was between the end of World War II and Vietnam, so that's, I think that's one of, one of the reasons that it became the Forgotten War, you know? Um, I grew up in Dorchester, as I know, they graduated from Hyde Park. I was in the Army in September 1949 at the age of 17. Um, you know, there was really no work around at that time. And um, I was only 17, so I had to have my parents' permission. But my father was a real grinder. It was 75 bucks a month then, and I had to agree to send home 40. So, and then it was two dollars for dry cleaning, so I ended up like thirty bucks a month. I think the guys in jail were getting that. Much <laughs> in, <you know? laughs> but uh, then we I, we took a troop train from not a luxury line either. In December 1949, that's when I got assigned to the Second Engineer Battalion. We departed with the Second Infantry Division on about 23 July 1950. Arrived at the Pusan Prairie on about 15 August. We engaged in combat in, in, uh, in, uh, immediately. We battled our way to the Manchurian border, 
and where it was 40 below zero without winter gear. We had to defend the North Korean army. However, the Chinese army entered the picture and vastly outnumbered our second division. My battalion went from 1,267 in three days. Uh, very few of the survived. They were either captured or killed, or POW. Due to our tremendous losses, we were, we were de declared combat ineffective. However, we lived to fight another day and participated in six out of the ten major battles when I was there. I was discharged in October 1952. We did a short start at the Quincy shipyard. It's really, we didn't get along. <laughs> so, I did not marry the girl next door. I married the girl across the street. I re-enlisted in the Army and told my wife that we were going to go to Europe on a honeymoon. But I forgot until I re-enlisted. <laughs> I said, whoops. So, uh, we were there for three years. I retired in February 1972. We have six great children, two girls, four boys. And we started Charlotte Leasing, in which my son and my grandson currently run. Which all four boys worked in, in one job. Uh, we gave them the crappy job. If they didn't like it, they, you know, they had to start at the bottom. I had one grandson that came in with a buddy. He came in with flip flops and shorts on it. I said, What are you doing? You on the beach? Oh, I'm coming to work. I said, You're not working here. <laughs> so, but he went home and told his dad that I wasn't, that was very strict. <laughs> so, uh, my son Bobby and my grandson Robbie now currently run it, and they're doing a great job because my customers are either retired or they're dead. So, <laughs> that comes with age, I guess, you know, because I'll be 90 in July, good Lord willing. Well, my mom lived to be 101 and a half, so I hope you have her genes. Thank you very much for inviting me today, and I appreciate you. Thank you, sir, and thank you for your service. At this time, troops, bring your units to attention. Others, uh, and, uh, Harry. We will do Others. the roll call of the deceased on the wall here. Please welcome Task Commander Bill Cochran. He's an arm. <laughs> Robert I. Adams. Accounted for. Albert I. J. Devon. Accounted for. Thomas D. Bishop. Accounted for. Michael I. Broderick. Accounted for. Lawrence S. Bruno. Accounted for. James H. Cameron. Accounted for. Howard E. Davis. Accounted for. Walter A. Delicieta. Accounted for. Robert I. Duffy. Accounted for. Kenneth Ehlers. Accounted for. Gordon Erickson. Accounted for. Lee H. Favorite. Accounted for. Robert R. Foley. Accounted for. Dale M. Gilbert. Accounted for. Frederick H. Graves. Accounted for. Albert L. Happer. Accounted for. Mervyn K. Buddy Horn. Accounted for. Robert W. Lehman. Accounted for. George B. McDonald. Accounted for. Order. Order. Please welcome past commander and Korean War veteran Sonny Joyce. Bernard McDougall. Accounted for. Avon McLaren. Accounted for. Lloyd McLeod. Accounted for. Michael Maha. Accounted for. John Mariano. Accounted for. Chester Paris. Accounted for. Armand Boyer. Accounted for. Malcolm Reardon. Accounted for. Albert Rogers. Accounted for. Roger Snyder. Accounted for. George Smart. Accounted for. George Stevens. Accounted for. Richard Sullivan. Accounted for. John Sweeney. Accounted for. Paul Sweeney. Accounted for. Joseph Theron. Accounted for. Joseph Toomey. Accounted for. 
Donald S. Walden. Accounted for. And Donald A. Wolf. Accounted for. Thank you, sir. Now it's time to lay the wreath in front of the memorial, remembering the 38 men who are no longer with us. Sergeant in arms. Sir. Prepare for the volley, sir. <coughs> you all can be seated if you like. Troops, bring your units to present arms. Sergeant at arms, sure. please play taps. And salute. At this time, I would like to introduce to you Order. Quincy Order. Police Officer Don Sutter. Is he, he's here, right? Order. To sing Order. God Bless America. God bless America. Land that I love, stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home. My home, sweet home. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we will now do our closing prayer. Please welcome <laughs> Mr. Don Knight, sir. Uncover. Thank you, George. You're welcome, sir. 
you know, every history book that I've ever read did refer to this Korean conflict as the Forgotten War. But I can tell you it's not forgotten. It's not forgotten by the families that are here today. It's not forgotten by the families of these 38 brave men on this wall. It's not forgotten by the city of Quincy. It's not forgotten by the veterans of Quincy. Let us now bow our heads and reflect. God of all creation, you've taught us that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. We live by hope and the future you hold for us. Grant us, we pray, hope for future generations that they may never know or inflict the horror and terror we recall this day. Strengthen our hope when it falters and teach us to strive in all we do to realize the hope that is in your word and witness. We ask this of you, O Lord. Amen. You all can be seated. Before we leave today, we have to thank a few people because this project just didn't happen overnight. It took a lot of work and a lot of man hours to put this back together. And that's without even changing anything, just spicing it up, I guess. But uh, I want to thank the Junior ROTC for being here today and their color guys. All these colors. To everybody that participated in this event today, thank you all for being here and doing what you did. To Feely uh, Power Coating, who did the change for us free of charge, great job. To our firing squad behind us, you can't see them, but I'm sure you heard them. To the Park Department, Steve Zambruno, who's behind me. Without him, this would have never have gotten done. Steven, a big hat's off to you, sir. Huge. And to all of you for being here today to remember these 38 men behind me. May God bless you. May God bless the United States of America. We'll see you next year. Thank you all. Thank you.